Welcome to Wisdom Talk Radio, a collaborative community of explorers in conscious living. A fundamental truth about life is that everything always changes. And as you try and count on something remaining constant, you know, whether that's a relationship, a job, your situation in life, um, you know, whatever it is, the, the realization usually comes in and sometimes it, you know, kind of smacks you in the face that nothing is indeed certain and everything changes all the time. So change maybe is the only thing that we can count on as, as to, to happen. So how do we navigate this? It's something that is so, it's so important to be able to move through life in a way where you're not feeling attacked by change or thrown by it. Well, martial arts might not be your first uh, thought about how to do that. And yet my guest today is a master who has lived his life in pursuit of peace and purpose and truth what I think of as truth, and resilience in the face of uncertainty. Wait until you hear his bio. As you will know that we are fortunate indeed to have him with us. So stay here. Stay right here with us. Welcome. I'm Laurie Seymour, host of Wisdom Talk Radio and CEO and founder of the Baca Institute, home of the quantum connection process. Discover your unique connection with the essence of who you are by taking the quantum connection quiz. We are each designed to connect directly with source. We don't have to go through an intermediary, but we are each designed to go to have that connection in a different way. And knowing your own style, both your mm, not sure if I like the word superpower, but you know, the, the things that are really inherent to you and your strengths and what your learning edge is, that opens a deeper connection with the universe and with your, with your relationship. And it really is the secret to creating more of what you truly want in your life. So my guest today is Stephen K. Hayes. He is a revered figure in martial arts. Gained, he has gained recognition in the Black Belt Hall of Fame for pioneering Japanese ninja martial arts. Promoting the benefits of life mastery through martial arts, he travels the world as teacher, seminar leader, and lecturer. And we're going to hear some more about some new things coming up inspiring others by translating his extensive background in martial arts and meditation into practical lessons for handling the pressures and uncertainties of life. Notably, and this is really interesting, and I know we'll hear about this too, he safeguarded and advised the Dalai Lama during his North American visits. So welcome, Stephen Hayes. I am really pleased. We've had a, a few minutes to chat before starting this and talking about Japan, and then I'm noticing our colors, and we both got the memo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great to be here, Laurie. I really appreciate it. So so where shall we begin? I, I'm, I'm thinking about at least to have you say a little about um, the, the ninja style of martial arts and and what that means what that is and why you like why did that draw you well you know when i was a small child growing up in wilmington delaware in the 1950s uh i saw martial arts on some tv shows but there were no teachers you know around in those days and in those days it wasn't a kid thing at all but i was just electrified uh and I'd seen kids at school get picked on and uh, bullied. I was never really bullied, but I saw other kids and I didn't like that. That shouldn't happen, but I didn't know what to do about it. Uh, I wasn't a fighter. Uh, I, I had no idea. But in my mind, in my young brain, you know, was this obsession <laughs> with uh, martial arts. And I had to wait till I was like 10 years 
and I, I started college and I started martial arts training. And uh, I read a book about these legendary Japanese, some people call them heroes, others call them villains, uh, the ninja of Japan. And it was just too much. Uh, even back in the day, no <laughs> internet, no email, no nothing. I just got on an airplane and went to Japan to find these wow. guys. Wow. Yeah. And uh, uh, fortunately, uh, you know, was accepted into the school uh, and uh, stayed there for several years. And uh, since then, like 1980, my visa ran out. And uh, so I came back to America. But my wife, who's Japanese, she's from uh, Kumamoto, way down in the south. And, we, and she trains, too. She's been mm. practicing for 40 some years. So we go back to Japan every year for like a month, month and a half. And I have found, you know, to be a real wonderful, I think, unique approach. Uh, I've never run into anybody who talks like me in the martial arts. And, uh, <laughs> you know, on one hand, there's the physical security, physical security. And I find you know, a lot of men and men, maybe women too nowadays, but you know, there's this little deep seated sense of fear. Mm -hmm. And when that's triggered with confrontation or conflict uh, and we don't know what to do with it, mm -hmm. you know, it's like giving a child a shotgun for a self-defense. Mm -hmm. It's all or nothing. And uh, it scares people. And so we address physically how to handle dangerous situations. Uh, a very subtle method um like karate is a power method somebody mm -hmm. throws a punch we knock the punch out of the way and we hit them even harder than they were going to hit us and the ninja martial art is very different the power comes at us we just move our feet and now the power can be as powerful as it wants but there's nothing there to dead air <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. And then we can access the center line. So physic, like real non uh, elaborate, non complex, direct, here's how you handle physical danger. And on the other hand, uh, you know, from my years of traveling with the Dalai Lama, uh, I was so blessed. Oh, God, so blessed. I was there providing security escort for him, but I got to take in so many behind the scenes lessons. And mm -hmm. so I took a lot of that, uh, you know, I think uh, Buddhism really is, it, it makes a poor religion, makes a poor religion. <laughs> it's uh, it's really a method of studying like yoga. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a method where you can practice these things and if you get your results then oh now you're ready for this lesson and so i put a lot of those things to do with uh inner development and ethics code and how to be a hero and how to take on dangerous things there are formulas mm -hmm. in this uh tibetan and japanese uh esoteric buddhism and by combining those two we have our our current program that i've been offering um, the world and if you were to if i were to ask you and i so i will ask you what is the the essence of that what would you say well i think the truest essence actually comes from a quote from the dalai lama where you know i i used to ask him all these Embarrassing question. I'm embarrassed now, you know, to think of my questions back in my 40s. Uh, but I was going, you know, hey, well, what is it to be enlightened? Mm -hmm. uh, and he was so patient with me, you know, <clears throat> raw beginner. And he was so patient. And he would always answer me. And uh, he said, well, that's where you recognize the true nature of reality. And Whoa, 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 that really goes deep. And mm -hmm. I think the essence of our martial art and our spiritual training combined, there's a third element too, but those two combined, <clears throat> wow, I learn more about myself mm -hmm. and then I can relate to my 
environment in a more appropriate way. So I think that's the real essence is discovering how do I move? How do I respond? And we have a series of four, uh, you know, two polarities this way that, that people can study and say, well, which one am I? Which one am I? And how can somebody trigger the opposite in me and get me to um, say and do things that are not in my best interest? And people do this all the time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not even in physical confrontation, you know, just even in an office setting. You know, there's some twisted folks out there, you know, who think they have to beat somebody else in order to promote themselves. Right. And, you know, <clears throat> uh, or even in families, sad to say, you know, there's some families that have these twisted dynamic where a child is excited and enthusiastic and they found their dream and they, th this is the song they're going to sing and they're ready to go. You know, and an older one, no, you can't make any money doing that. Mm -hmm. you'd, be, uh, you'd look goofy. Uh, nobody's going to, you know, and uh, kind of. Yeah, I'm going to do what I have to do or what I'm supposed to do, <clears throat> not what my heart is guiding me to do. Yeah, yeah. And and that may come from love. You know, the older one, uh, oh, I tried living my dream and it mm -hmm. failed. So I'm not going to let you make that mistake. Uh, anyway, so in families and social things, um, in offices, uh, we have all these personal dynamics. And if we, so I'm, I'm, I think I'm answering your question, you know, what's mm -hmm. the essence? Mm -hmm. uh, how do I figure out what's really going on? You know, what, what is motivating this person? Uh, why are they doing this? Why are they saying that? And then I can respond in a way that hopefully soothes them and maybe even advances them a little bit. But I can't, like, be going back and forth. I can't, like, he said this, so I'll say this. Uh, right, I, right. Yeah, I have to be ab above it, yes. Ab yeah, yeah. I, I, I say be above the fray. Don't get involved in these little arguments. That's a trick. Be above it. What are these people really looking for? What do they really want? And if you can help them get it in a way that doesn't cost you, Boom, everybody wins. I, I mean, I'm thinking about frequencies because I'm look I'm listening to you and thinking about it from the perspective of frequency instead of being at that low frequency of, well, he said this, so I'm gonna do that, and it's tit for tat. I'm going to raise my frequency and see how it looks from a different perspective, to see what's going on. But that there's a there's a piece in there which is how do I how do I not just react how do i find the way to respond so that i'm not automatically reacting from that fight or flight from the from that amygdala part of the brain that wants to keep me safe and wants to just f hit the other person verbally if not physically oh no that and that's the real essence of what i call true uh uh real world uh self-defense personal development so right now, it was very popular in the media is this, what they call MMA, mm -hmm. you know, where it's actually replaced boxing and pro wrestling now. Kids all mm -hmm. watch it. And, uh, you know, these tough guys come out and trash talk each other and, you know, uh, all this kind of stuff. And some people could mistakenly believe that's martial arts. Uh, I mean, they use martial arts, but it's an entertainment form. It yeah. has nothing to do with you being out on the street, I'm having a beautiful day. I'm with the people I love. Everything is great. We had a wonderful lunch. Let's go over here. And all of a sudden, you're confronted by somebody that uh, is not on that frequency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, they see you and, uh, and and somebody's hurt them when they were little and they don't even remember it, you know, but they're, they're just this angry, tough guy kind of stuff. And they see you and you're so happy. You're so intelligent. You're so beautiful. You're so wealthy. Uh, you got a great family. Uh, I want you to hurt as much as I hurt. You know, and that's what they're really saying. And, uh, okay, how do we deal with that? You know, I mean, give it a shot, a verbal way, a, a posture way, uh, even carefully using a little bit of humor in there. Uh, maybe, maybe we don't need to fight. 
uh, maybe this guy goes away feeling a little bit better about himself if I know how to handle it. You know, that's a real victory. Mm -hmm. But it's like MMA, you know, where people are pounding each other. And uh, uh, so it's very confusing for a lot of young folks and even older ones, too. You know, they say, well, you guys, you know, uh, aren't very kick ass. And I want to study with a kick ass guy. Mm. We are so deadly that we don't even have to act deadly. Uh, we're protectors. We're not predators. You know, predators yeah. looking around. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Everybody here is a little safer because we're here. So we're is that part of it? Like that, that, that I develop myself in the way of understanding that I can be a protector rather than a predator. I totally think so. Or a victim. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think so. I think so. And uh, there's a kind of a ninja philosophy called Kyojitsu Tenkan Ho. And Kyojitsu Tenkan Ho means you can deal with reality in any different direction. Mm -hmm. um, somebody says something offensive to you, you don't have to say, well, that's offensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody says something offensive, I could laugh, you know, and say, oh, man, first time I heard that one today, <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. uh, hey, look, pal, I'm just out having a good time today. And uh, I am so sorry. I made you so angry at me. Uh, I totally screwed up. Please accept my apologies. I'm going to get in my truck, go my way. You get, you go yours, and you have a beautiful day. What do you say, pal? You know, if I say something like that, mm -hmm. it allows him a little room to save face. Uh, but also, did you notice, like, where that came Ah, body. I didn't say, hey, look, I, I don't want any trouble. I mean, no, that's why I'm picking on you, pal, because I don't want any trouble either. I want to administer a beating. I don't want to have a fight. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's what they don't say that. No, but no, but that's the recognition. Yeah. So, but if I talk from way down here, hey, oh, man, you're the third guy today. I've pissed off. I am so sorry. Uh, well, that's kind of funny. You know, this guy, uh, he's not afraid of me, but. He's not like pushing back. Uh, uh, there are very clever ways we can use our language and our our, our posture, gestures, uh, eye contact, uh, and that's all a part of our our program. Interesting, interesting. So when you when you talk about um, the way of the ninja as a model for for self actualization, is this part of that? Oh, I, I think so. I mean, don't you? Can yes. you see how in order to pull this off, I've got to be a lot cleaner about myself. I have to be clearer about myself. Mm -hmm. There are certain uh, insults that somebody could throw, uh, you know, call me gramps or, you know, some age thing. I don't care about that at all. I mean, I've wanted to be old and wise ever since I was <laughs> nine, you know, so I'm, I'm happy. It's not an insult to me, but there are people who, if you refer to their age or gramps or granny or whatever, you know, they get angry. Doesn't affect me. Doesn't affect me. There are, there are certain things that people could say to me that, Oh, that's still a button. That's still a button. But and, you know what those are. Well, I know what they are. And I, I have not gotten rid of those yet because uh, they're so deep-seated. Mm -hmm. Rid of those yet, but I've found ways of going around it in a way that this other person doesn't know. <laughs> That's a but. Mm -hmm. You know, because I mean, think about you know, conflict on the street. Somebody's just going to throw stuff at you. They don't know you. Mm -hmm. uh, no idea. So they're going to just make up stuff, you know. Um, you have a cross on a chain. Or, oh, you think Jesus is going to come and help you out, buddy? You know? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's just a decoration I wear. You know what I mean? Uh, he, he's going to throw stuff out that he thinks, you know, uh, you're a little overweight. Hey, hey, fat boy, what are you doing? You know, or you're a little skinny. Hey, bones, what do you think? You, you know, they're just going to throw stuff out at mm -hmm. you. 
And, uh, but this guy doesn't know me, you know, uh, he doesn't know me. Uh, <laughs> it really becomes oh. funny when you see it, you know, like, yes, yes, yes. When you see it, <laughs> oh God, man. It, it strikes me that you could be a wonderful, um, consultant and trainer for politicians. <laughs> because you see this kind of attack mentality coming through and and there's all kinds of people that are supporting yeah 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 but it, it's like there's a way of shifting that a way of turning that around and 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 i'd love to take that into a conversation around what i see so big in the world today which is that sense of separation you know you're other you're oh. you're not me you're not like me and therefore there's something wrong with you you know i think uh what i'm going to say is a little controversial uh but let's have some fun with it Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> get people writing comments <laughs> like this guy. Yeah. but uh that really is a key to a lot of our culture right now this this mm -hmm. this identity politics Okay, you're you're for this, you're against that, you wear this, you look like this, you got this kind of skin color. Oh, you're my kind of person. Well, wait a minute. Oh, well, one of those is different. Oh, you know, I'm not going to accept anything from you, including friendship. And uh, you know, I'm a baby boomer. Uh, I remember the '60s. We thought we brought in civil rights we passed right. laws and hey come on people are people this guy's a little darker this gal is a little lighter but we're just people and it worked i think it worked i mean you got way out on the edge you know wacko you know kkk people or wacko you know black leopard people or whatever you know i mean but the majority of people hey we just have more people we can have fun with now. We're allowed mm -hmm. to have fun with these people. So we thought we handled all that. Mm -hmm. We thought we handled all that. Hey, now, what are our grandchildren going to be opening up? Because we already got the race thing handled. No. Looks no. Like we don't, it, right. No, it's gone backwards. It's gone backwards, you know, to where, uh, and the media supports this and, uh, you know, where all this identity, well, if you're a black person, you got to do this. You got to vote this way. You got to believe this. You got to see all white people as oppressive. Oh, come on. Come on. That's just absolute uh, antithesis of advancing civilization. You know, we're back to tribes. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I heard that in the ancient language that these tribes would use, I mean, very different languages, mm -hmm. but the reference to themselves in their tribe was the people. We are the people. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. These others <clears throat> are not people. No, we're Tsutsis. Those are Hutus. They're not people. Mm -hmm. People look at this beautiful little child, not a person. It's a Hutu. You know, or it's an Ojibwe, or it's a Osage, or what? It, wow, or it's a Northern Irish as opposed to a Southern Irish, or it's a Catholic Irish. Oh God, come on, really, really? That's where we're operating from. I think today we've really gone back uh, to that. And anyway, <laughs> you'll probably get a lot of comments on this, That's but okay. well, I think. So, what do we need to do? What we what is, the, what is the what's the other side of that? Number one, recognize that the powerful media thrives on keeping us fighting. Okay. Uh, the media wants me when I wake up first thing in the morning. I grab this and see what's going on. <laughs> good news, good news is nice. Bad news is important. And, you know, we can see, you know, just even in the conventional news bureaus, you know, here's everything that's wrong. And, uh, uh, you know, they leave out certain stories that don't match the narrative. And uh, so number one is rise above <clears throat> this media push. And that is really hard to do. It's really hard to do because people are victim to it, you know. Um, as long as we allow ourselves. 
uh, yeah, yeah, and and we unconsciously allow ourselves. So that's number one. Okay. Number two is, uh, man, first thing every day uh, when we wake up, a beautiful day, think to myself, how can I help? How can I help? Mm. And uh, so resist the media uh, push and uh how can i help and uh i think those two things are are, are a start are a mm -hmm. start mm -hmm. as opposed to diving into media and believing everything you see and waking up every morning thinking uh, uh who's got it in for me today oh god you know those would be the opposite okay so so instead of thinking who's got it in for me today to flip that to because it's so much more empowering to feel that sense of how can I help? You know, where is whatever I have to offer needed? I feel that way. And that's kind of the basis of my whole adult life. Um, and that's why you're so, still doing what you're doing, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. But I had to learn it. I was maybe different as a mm. child and as a teenager. Mm -hmm. I went away as far away from my conventional life as possible without coming closer back, you know, and, uh -huh. uh, and all these crazy adventures. And they were not always easy, not always easy. Mm -hmm. uh, these lessons uh, in order to be really, you know, grab us sometimes uh, uh, didn't like the lesson, did mm -hmm. not like the lesson, but I needed to learn it. And that, formed me in my 20s and in my 30s uh but i was constantly i think i think probably when i was in my 30s and uh there was no public you know social media so that wasn't an issue and uh to a large degree the news reported the news mm -hmm. and you had to make up your mind about it Nowadays, everything I read, everything I read is opinion piece. Mm -hmm. This doesn't but I don't want to read some knucklehead's opinion. Tell me what happened. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not going to do that because they don't sell as many. Uh, uh, but probably instead of me waking up thinking, how can I help? When I was much, much younger, much, much younger, probably it was, what can I do to advance myself and be a little more the me I want to be. Mm -hmm. I was young. Mm -hmm. well, I was mm -hmm. young. 40 years later, I've gone through all the lessons and, uh, you know. You I'm think you've gone through all of the lessons? All that I've gone through. <laughs> I've gone, all that I've gone through. Now, there are more lessons, but I've gone through all the ones I have. Okay. You know? More but so now, but now there's new ones that show up, aren't there? I mean, that's what I find. I, I I think, well, you know, now I'm, you know, at this place in my life, and I have a new grandson, and you know, I'm 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 at this other end of things, and oh my God, there's so much more. Isn't that exciting? It is. It, it is, absolutely. Yeah, but there are people who don't feel that way. I know. No. I know. I no. I, I I know what I know, and uh, don't confuse me with the facts. Uh, I know <laughs> what I know. Yeah, I mean, there are people that get up every morning, and you know, and they they put one more brick in that wall. Mm -hmm. You know, oh gosh, how sad. So you know, so, so you 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 talk and talked in something that I read of yours about, um, and this it, I very much resonated with this: the value of having a, a mind or having a being that is open to everything and attached to nothing. Well, you know, it's, you know, my friends would scold me. So well, that's easy to say. Well, so yeah, it's easy it, to it say. It is easy to say, but uh, okay. But besides that, you know, what do we mean by attached? You know, I've had long discussions with people. Well, you know, I'm attached to my child. I love my child. I'm caring about them. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't care about my child. No, no. Attachment means you regard some other thing or person or situation or condition. You consider that responsible for your survival in the world. Ooh. That's attachment. 
you know, where, oh, all of a sudden this goes over here. Uh, I'm in survival. Uh, uh, no, you can love your children to death. You can love your friends. You can have a ball at your occupation. You can love your home, uh, but that's not attached. So, I mean, I live in a, I'm old. I, it, I, I have been so be careful what you're saying. <laughs> well, I intend to get a lot older too, <laughs> but, but I think, you know, I, I've been so, so blessed. I mean, just so blessed. And I recognize it every day. You know, my home is my dream home. Uh, I'm married to my dream girl uh, for, you know, 40 some years. And I'm still excited about my wife and, oh, my kids turned out great and they married well. And we have beautiful grandchildren. Each one of them is their own personality. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, I drive my dream cars. Uh, I only spend time with people I like. Yes. Uh, yes. That's pretty neat. You know, yeah, so yeah. somebody doesn't like me and uh, you know, give me a hard time and goodbye. I'm no longer here. Uh, and I can get away with it. Now, and I know, I know there are people in their 20s that have to work in a corporation or a company and you got office bullies and office tricksters and people a that boss you don't <laughs> like. A boss, like yeah, you don't want. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. So I, I acknowledge that. No, maybe that's a thing of age. Uh, I've just slowly eliminated all those conditions. And when you're younger, no, you got to, but you can learn tricks. Mm -hmm. We can teach you tricks for how to put up with that miserable boss or that uh, office bully or the office flirt. And uh, you're in a relationship. Uh, there, there are ways of dealing with all of that. We can teach you. We can teach you. But anyway, my point is I'm so blessed uh, and I am really open. I think my one challenge, one challenge I have in my life is uh, I am, it sounds immodest to say this, but I'm so revered, I'm so revered that a lot of the time people will tell me what they think I want to hear. Mm-hmm. Don't level with me. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. This is a ninja operation. It's intelligence gathering. You've got to tell me what's really going on. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to fire you as my friend, but people are scared. You know, well, he may not like to hear that. Uh, so we'll tell him what he wants to hear. And uh, I, th I think that's my one uh, biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they're polite ways to tell me things. <laughs> That I don't want to hear. No, they don't. They don't have to be mean. <clears throat> they don't have to be mean, but just <laughs> hey, this is twenty three, Stephen. Uh, yeah. We see things different. When you first started out in nineteen eighty, that was three, three generations ago. Mm -hmm. There was my wife and me when we were young. Mm -hmm. We had children, and now we have grandchildren. That's three generations. Right. Things are different right. now. Oh, okay. Hey, what can you tell me that would make what I'm offering? And what I'm trying to give to the world, what would make it more effective for 2023? You know, and uh, no holds barred, no holds barred. I'm, you know, uh, so, well, I think you should get like a long gray wig. And, you know, <laughs> we'll, hey, we'll give that a try, you know, <laughs> or don't wear, you know, funny Asian clothes, you know, wear a golf shirt. Well, well we could give that a try, uh, you know. I'm, but that's the part about having that um, that mind or that being that is open to everything. Let's let's experiment. Let's see what is. So I may have seen, um, I may have believed something so strongly, and I've held tight to it. But how is that holding me back now? How is that stopping me from seeing beyond it, seeing around the corner? Because there's always an around the corner. You know, I think there is, and uh, oh gosh, we don't really have time to go into this here, so I'll just leave this okay. little. little okay. Thing. Um, there are certain things that we can look at, and we can say, "Hey, I'm going to have an open mind. I'm going to look at that." But after we look at it, we say, "No, that is not for me. That's mm -hmm. not for me." Uh, well, you're so open. Uh, well, I'm not so open that my brain falls out. Uh, <laughs> you know, I have certain goals 
that I'm trying to move towards. And this open-minded, wild thing does not fit. In mm -hmm. fact, it mm -hmm. conflicts with that. Okay, now that's the challenge. How do I know what are my standards and values? Are they big enough? Mm -hmm. But I can reject certain things that come mm -hmm. in and, mm -hmm. and not unfit. And how am I just so rigid and stubborn? Yeah. You yeah. know, like, well, I hate pepper on eggs. So, oh. it's, so it's discernment that you're talking about. Yes. Having the discernment to be able to see does something line up with me or does it no it doesn't it doesn't resonate it hits in a way that i my whole body when i'm open to looking at it goes Ugh. yeah yeah does that make you sense know, oh totally totally and in fact you know you'll get a kick out of this the kogo daishi this great saint of uh japan in the 800s brought back this esoteric buddhist system from china and and, there and, and started public education. Oh, and built bridges and uh, uh, design, supposedly designed a written form. I mean, this guy's fabulous. But there are five Buddha figures in which really, I mean, they're not people. They're like states, certain state, uh, five of these. And, uh, and they represent five like personality flaws we uh -huh. have and how we can convert the don't eliminate them but we convert those flaws into wisdoms and one of the five wisdoms is discernment exactly what you said so powerful mm -hmm. discernment uh i look at a vast array of all the possibilities and i can find exactly what i need mm -hmm. and okay now we let these go and now i i find that i it's in our martial art, it's uh, associated with objectively watching what another person is doing. They uh, hit. We, I already see it. You're tightening this muscle up here. I already see it. you're starting with your chest. You can't move without moving your chest. And so I see that I can move discrimination, uh, discernment. Uh, it's all associated with this so-called fire element. Uh, and we can teach. All of that. Is this an inner process or relating to physical combat? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is this learning something more about your enemy? Yes. Is, oh, is this learning something more about uh, you? Yes. Yes. All of the above. All the above. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd love for you to take a little, a few minutes to share a little of what you were beginning to tell me before we started about what you're moving into and what you're about to launch. It was very exciting to me. Yeah, I think uh, what I'm looking to do now is take all this martial art wisdom and esoteric, you know, Tibetan, Japanese stuff and stripping away the Asian exoticness of that and just relating it to the actual human experience. Uh, just boom, straightforward language. So I'm going to start a series of seminars, and I have some very dear friends in Japan. They're they're not Japanese; they're Americans, but uh, real good friends that deal with this kind of stuff as well. Uh, not from a martial art perspective, but more of a spirit. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're talking about creating a series of workshops, uh, seminars. And I don't know; some of we might start with Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 ultimately, I think there's a great power in going somewhere and just taking a few days to get immersed in a certain energy. But yes, yeah, it's hard, harder to sell today. Everybody wants. Oh, don't say that. I'm, I'm just creating a, a retreat in in near Barcelona with this. You are. Yeah. You are. Yeah, and for next April. One comment. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> sign me up sign okay. me up do you have people signed up yet I, we haven't even we've just oh, okay. centered on the place and uh, it's about to go start go live god we've wonderful, got people interested. Yeah. that is wonderful yeah because I mean, there I, is something about gathering live in the energy of a place and in the energy of what wants to be taught and communicated 
Oh, yeah. And just the process of getting there. I have these Tibetan monk friends that live up on the Tibetan-Nepal border. You know, I've been to their monastery like maybe six times. And, uh, oh, gosh, you know, it's not easy to get to. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is something about every step of the way. Let go of this. Step of that, you know, well, I'm tuned into my grandkids. No, I kind of forget my grandkids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, 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 my house needs, I kind of forget my house. Uh, uh, well, my wife, I kind of forget my wife. Uh, mm -hmm. Just letting go of everything that means so much to me and just really concentrate on myself. Something in the, mm -hmm. anyway. So we may do something like that where, no, there's an actual uh, physical get there, but we'll introduce it through some Zooms. So yes, people see yes. what we're doing. Is this okay. valuable? Can I see how now it's worth it? Because it's going to be expensive. Yeah. And it's going to mean take going away from, yeah. I, mean, I told you about long. going to Mount Koya, to Koyasan in Japan. And this was 92. Oh, okay. my daughter was two years old. And <laughs> yeah, I had to. And so I remember calling her from a phone booth. There she is at two. And she says, Oh, hi, Okazayamas, mommy. <laughs> watch that girl uh, watch she, that now girl. she just she speaks french or not french uh russian and dutch <laughs> no, no japanese <laughs> oh kidding wow interesting girl interesting girl yeah so i'm going to start some of these workbooks and i'm in the process of, of bringing i have three books that are not physically how to fight but mm -hmm. martial artists will want to get these books because it talks about the inner stuff and how to mm -hmm. recognize what this person is doing and uh, i think i'm gonna self publish these i've had publishers over the years but that whole world is changing now mm -hmm. and i think uh you know the new wave is uh is self-publishing so i'm in the process of exploring the books are written mm -hmm. uh how to those uh out um are they a series are they something that will come out as a series I mean, are they connected or related no, to each, each one stands alone but if you read this one oh you can take those insights to read this one and mm -hmm. uh, uh yeah it it relates a lot of the stuff that classically came from my ninja martial art mm -hmm. and my years with uh, dalai la and uh, some japanese teachers but uh, you don't have to culturally go there. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be very direct English, um, impactful stuff, not so much lecture as it is exercise. We set up an exercise, mm -hmm. go through it. And a lot of these are like with, I call them talking meditations, mm -hmm. two people. One person explains something and the other just listens, you know, and then that person talks and then they compare notes and, uh, you know, then we can kind of step in and point out where they had some certain beliefs. Uh, is that belief helping you or anyway, very, very personal. Um, and uh, so I'm excited about starting that up like real soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> real okay. soon. Well, you heard it here, folks. You heard it here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for being such a great guest and, and sharing, sharing your wisdom and, and laughing and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I really want to hear more about what you're creating right now and, and, um, and how to, how that's going to unfold. Mm. Oh, and would you let people know, how to uh, it'll be in the show notes but will you let people know how to find out more about what you're doing and where you are yeah right now we're radically redoing certain internet things but i do have a internet a uh, website mm -hmm. that people go to and you know a couple of books available and a little bit about what i'm doing and that'll be beefed up at, mm -hmm. uh, as we move along but it's just really simply Stephen K. Hayes, like a, a giant word, S-T-E-H-E-N-K-H-A-Y-E-S.com. Mm -hmm. Stephen K. Hayes. 
Perfect. Um, and, uh, you know, they could check that as a first way. And there's a way to get in touch with me if they, you know, had some specific question that I might mm -hmm. be able to answer or uh, they're interested in some of these programs. Uh, uh, so Stephen K. Hayes dot com would be the uh, website. And if you when you um, start to have something that is ready for people to be part of, make sure you let me know so that I can add this that into uh, into the, the episode. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great. Great. Thank you. Well, great talking with you, Laurie. Yeah, I, wonderful. Oh, thank oh. you for being here at Wisdom Talk Radio. Wonderful. Wonderful. And thank you to our, our listeners, our viewers, for being with us today here at Wisdom Talk Radio. I always say, join us here regularly, because every time that there's that, that opportunity for more wisdom, discovery, and illumination, you can find us on your favorite place to listen to us. And please do leave a review, because when you leave a review, if you've enjoyed listening, that tells other people, oh, this is worth listening to. And then we, we really grow our impact. And I don't mean just our impact of Wisdom Talk Radio, but what happens here at Wisdom Talk Radio and the messages and the teachings and the, the, the wisdom, you know, that gets to, to grow and expand. So for more about thriving with your own personal quantum connection, take the quantum connection quiz today and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us here at Wisdom Talk Radio. We wish you well in your conscious explorations. For more information and to join in the conversation, our website is wisdomtalkradio.com or at Wisdom Talk Radio on Facebook.